uh, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, he's great for a sports yeah. game. You could call him up and ask him who won. Yeah, <laughs> it's really fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely. Tomorrow Sometimes isn't tomorrow to him. No, tomorrow was already today. It's today. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. I, now, i got to give the audience a little bit of a backstory here on how uh, you and I hooked up. I read one of his books, uh, one called Once, which I believe is going to be a motion picture, probably produced by you, Howard. <laughs> that, that, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Yes. And uh, this guy was doing something I had not seen anybody else do, and that was he created this multimedia experience with a print book which I thought was astounding. He had people, uh, there was an art display in Mexico, original poems from Russia, uh, one thing, I mean, just incredible that he had this like international team of ancillary artistic projects related to his novel. And okay. I went, wow. So, so... The so book was good, too. How did you hook up? Uh, I don't know. Me and how did we hook up? Do you remember how we met? Well, wow, you met yeah, at the bar. I still remember because uh, it was uh, it was uh, early 2010 when I was uh, uh, working on my book once, Ask Me Anything Not Love, and I was promoting the book on Facebook actually. And uh, I had set up a page over there, and I was promoting the book when uh, you actually liked the page, and that's how we got connected. And uh, later on, uh, you, you you decided to read the book and review the book. And uh, when I read your review, uh, it was really very nice, and I was really humbled to read uh, your your praise uh, for my work. And and the way you acknowledge it, it was really a great experience for me. It was a great motivational, motivational factor for me as well. So that's how we hooked up, and uh, ever since then, uh, we never looked back. And uh, our friendship, the bond we share, uh, just got developed and got better and better with the passage of time. And uh, now it's even 2017, so it's been seven long years. Seven and long years. Time I have now, seven in the, long in years, and during. In, in the past I'm six in the past six months, I know you want to talk, but I'm not going to let you. Uh, <laughs> in the but in the past six months, you and I have kind of gotten to know each other, but not ever. We've never spoken. Um, but yeah, I know. Absolutely, it, Howard. Uh, absolutely, Howard. You're right. Uh, we have been connected. Uh, we have been connected uh, through social networking sites, uh, and we have exchanged some messages as well. But uh, we, we we never spoke uh, person to person. So it's a great experience for me talking to you live on, on such a great platform. And it's a great experience for me, and 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 me too. But uh, you know, uh, this show is we we don't take ourselves seriously. You understand that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Nobody. take Howard seriously, and I know he doesn't take me seriously. So <laughs> this is uh, this is this is a true crime show that we actually have fun with, instead of those yeah, those dour uh, true crime shows <laughs> that are just so boring. Oh come on, and Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I think and I think that's the beauty of the show and I think that's the beauty of the show that's the USP of the show that's the uniqueness of the show that's the factor of the show that you don't take it seriously <laughs> and, and and now let me and now let me add one thing over here that uh, uh, in my book once that uh, Burl just mentioned I have a dialogue over the, in the book written that uh, novel writing is all about not taking yourself seriously but to take your work seriously <laughs> so what you said uh, reminds me of my dialogue from months well, there, there you go, and, and and we will make a movie out of that. If uh, you know what the heck, why not? Yeah. That's what I say. Inshallah, I'm pretty much confident that the book has been uh, recommended to be a Hollywood movie, and uh, sooner or later, uh, God willing, it will be turned into a major motion picture, a Hollywood movie, or a minor motion picture. Well, then uh, that'll <laughs> that, way. and that will make you a bigger star, and 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 people will buy more of your books. It's it's all it, the way you have this thing tied up. It's 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 mind-boggling, actually. I'm gonna want you to make me more famous than I am uh, on social media. <laughs> <laughs> and Howard okay, is already well, pretty well, then, famous. Well, I think then you should hire me as a PR, your PR manager or a marketing uh, expert uh, to, 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 to to be a part of your team. That's not a bad idea. That's, that's, a, that's <laughs> not a bad idea. Uh, as long as it doesn't cost... Indeed. If it costs me money, it's a really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> what if it costs him money, Howard? If it costs him money? Yeah. I could care less. <laughs> you're, all, you're all for it. I'm all for that, sure. <laughs> well, you well, know that unless and until you don't get commercial value for your work, there's no point in doing something. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a thousand, by, by the way, you're a thousand percent right. You're a thousand Indeed. percent right. Not a thousand and one percent, but a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be better oh, than that. Oh, thank you so much. Now, you, uh, thank you, you so much. You have been uh, praised uh, as being a, a, a marketing expert, which you are, and you started off self-publishing. Doing your own stuff, yeah. your own covers, your own everything, your own promotion. You, now, you know how to do that, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, over here, I would like to just mention that uh, being a marketing specialist, the point was to create a product and do something that no one else has, uh, no one else has even dared or even uh, dream. Uh, ha- no one has ever dreamt uh, to do it. So I, I started off doing things to make my, uh, to make an indelible mark in the book industry <coughs> with with my marketing expertise and uh, uh, thing, uh, and and whatever i did just uh, uh, worked for me and it set up uh, it set new standards it set a tone for uh, uh, other authors around the world who actually looked up to me who actually started following what i started doing way uh, like uh, almost like 7 to 8 years back when i started writing my first book so that's how things happened and that's what marketing is all about i uh, understand you can't what, what offer something new what did you do before you wrote a book what, what was your actual what, how did you make a living uh, uh, actually uh, Howard I, I was a student I was I was studying in uh, university I was doing my uh, full, uh, master's degree master's with a specialization in marketing and at that point of time I started writing my first book The Strange Loyalist inspired by two events so, uh, so wh- while I was studying, I started writing my first book. And being a marketing student, I had certain ideas that how to implement them, and I practically utilized them uh, with my with my first book, The Strain Loyalist. And from there onwards, I started working on the second book, and so on and on and on. And I start and I also worked as a marketing specialist side by side uh, to make a living. Uh, so, so let me ask you this: other than your friendship with Burl and your friendship with me. Um, what the heck are you doing on this show today? <laughs> well, what I am doing over here uh, on the sh- on this show today is that I'm trying to uh, reach out uh, to your uh, to the, uh, to your audience, uh, to your listeners who listen to your show, to let them know about m- my books and to uh, let them know that how good these books are, so they should buy it, they should read it, and they should enjoy it and get entertained. What does it have to do with true crime? Nothing. <laughs> Zero, right? Yeah. Well, it's not. A, well, well, as far as true crime is concerned, I, I I would like to just add over here that as far as true crime is concerned, that uh, if my first book, The Strange Loyalist, uh, 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 or, or, or even my third book, Victim of Shame, uh, uh, those are those actually fall into the category of thriller, suspense. So, 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 so I write realistic fiction uh, that is very close to reality. So when they read uh, The Strange Loyalist, or if they read Victim of Shame, uh, they will they will get a feel of a true crime. <laughs> so it, it actually relates to your show. It uh, makes well, logical sense to me to have me on your show. Nice, nice try. <laughs> good. good. Uh, but, uh, oh, you've but, had you've had Barry Katz on here. What true crime was that? It was a crime. Yeah, it was a crime <laughs> happening. <laughs> 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 We've had people on there, movie and directors and actors, etc. Really no, we, no, we like to, to, to broaden our scope. We, we yeah. broaden our scope. It's not just true crime, and that's what, uh, you know, the true crime folks out there that really love true crime will consider us kind of a breath of fresh air, and then they go back to the dowers. <laughs> oh, come on. We're picking on our friends. I am picking on our friends. <laughs> I know you always do. Uh, if I don't mention Dan Zabansky's name... <laughs> Uh, somewhere in the first 10, 15 minutes of every show, it's he gets not mad a show. At you. Yeah, yeah, no, he, he does get mad. At me. Now uh, he you, does have. He now I got to talk, talk about a marketing thing here, real quick. Dan has a great show. He does. Okay. Not as good as ours. Well, not as funny. It's as not even <laughs> close. But he has a good show. We have the number one. Our well, show, and 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 you know this, uh, man. We, we, we are number one. We're the number one true crime show. Anywhere on and any air, and that's why, and, and that's why you have Mia on your show. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Because Mia deserves the best. <laughs> because that's the crime. <laughs> that's the crime right there. Now, uh, <laughs> I'm going to mention now one of the reasons, uh, one of the marketing plans of True Crime Uncensored, the show that you're on at this very moment, is true crime primarily uh, is known as a female-driven genre. Women are the primary mm-hmm. buyers and readers of true crime, and yet mm-hmm. Outlaw Radio, uh, from mm-hmm. the Magic Bad Allen's a beautiful uh, bar here, uh, has, is a predominantly male-dominated audience. Style. And we thought it'd be great fun mm-hmm. to try to bring true crime to a male audience, which, which we have succeeded in doing. Your books mm-hmm. also, the primary people who are buying your books are women who are crazy about you. I mean, if you wanted a wife, me and you could get one from any country in the world. About but, that. but but let me uh, let me insert here. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do don't get a wife. Don't 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 do that. I- 
I won't because I'm near no time for love, and Bird knows that, and everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah, but the, the character. But you, just, but you just got finished writing a great love story. Yeah, that, that, that now, now these things actually add to my marketing strategy. Like if Mia No Time for Love writes a love story, people get excited. People, uh, I, I used to get attention, so people, people, people get more excited that what kind of a love story he would have written if he has no time for love, and why, or, and what would it would be about? Uh, what, what would it be about? And that makes logical sense as far as my marketing expertise are concerned. That if Mia No Time for Love has written a love story, people automatically get attracted towards the book, and they want to know what the book is about, all about. And when I have written it, I have written it so well that the book actually uh, went on to receive uh, readers' favorite international book award that was won by Hollywood superstar Jim Carrey in 2014 and Mia uh, won it in uh, 2016. Uh, real quick, uh, I don't know whether you realize this or not, but you have a very heavy Pakistani accent. <laughs> <laughs> so slow down so the uh, the English dopes like me can understand what you're saying. That's very important. Um, I have nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to know. That's Mark, Mark Boyer Mark, asking Mark, a question. Mark over here in the corner. I'd like to know. Um, you haven't written the book yet, but you already have a cover and a promo video. What's up with that? Talk about the book missing. Yeah, uh, Mark, first of all, uh, let me answer Howard that Howard is all about the fluency. It's not about speaking fast or uh, try to get slowed down. It's about the fluency. So even in uh, states, some people speak so fast that you don't understand that what they have said or you have to put, uh, you have to focus on what they are saying. So it's about not being fast. It's about the fluency. So Alhamdulillah, I have that fluency like a native speaker. Now, coming back to Mark's question, Mark, actually the thing is that... Uh, missing uh, you can also uh, relate it to true crime to your show now let me tell you answer your question that it, it already has a cover and it already ha has a teaser trailer uh, Mark the point is that uh, unless or until you don't do something new how can you establish yourself how can you stand out in the crowd the point was that uh, the book is already in the making I'm already working on the book so it's not something that the book has not been written or it's not in progress and a cover has been done or a teaser trailer has been done. So The so teaser trailer has been done and the covers, the photo shoot, all the images, all the posters that you have already seen, they're actually all related to the book, related to the storyline, related to the plot. And they actually, they actually depict important scenes or the theme or the feel or the flavor of the book so being a marketing specialist while i have wrinkles uh, that just got released last year and i'm working on missing i want to st let my readers connected with me and they should know that what their favorite author who follow me what he is up to and what he is doing next so that's how the promotion of the book actually got started and for every book i have a new marketing strategy so uh, He's when, on top when, of it. when you finally write the book, are you gonna you're gonna probably have some idea of what the, your audience wants? Yeah, but the, the basic, basically the way I write book is that I have the plot written, I have everything set up. The only thing I need to do, or I'm working at the moment, is I'm just uh, writing down the book in the form of chapters. So I'm very much aware of what the, what the story is, what the plot is. So it's not going to change. So based upon that, because I'm an author and also a marketing specialist, that helps me to get all these stuff and all these things done in a timely manner and all these things connected with each other. Like, uh, it, it's fascinating because it's it's not how things are done. That's not, however, that's how a, uh, American International Pictures used to do it. Samuel C. Arkoff used the same methodology, even more so. He would have the one sheet for the movie first, and then he'd go to the writers and say, yeah. write me a movie that's, the, 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 that's the, like this the poster. The yeah, but that, that, that happens. It's happened in, in marketing um, in the early on stages of the infomercial in the United States uh, what mm -hmm. they would what they would do is that they would come up with the product or the book and, mm -hmm. and back then mm -hmm. we're talking in the late 50s early 60s they'd come up with mm -hmm. the book mm -hmm. and they would they would put it out there they would market it just like you're doing by the way they would have a trailer mm -hmm. they would have the whole nine yards they would not have the book and mm -hmm. what they would do is they would put it out there and and put it out there for sale and if enough people said they wanted to buy the book and actually put the money down then they would go hire an mm -hmm. author and write the damn book and then 
fulfill the orders. If they didn't get enough orders, they would just scrap it. Um, but now, now, let me let now let me add over here something that uh, now I will give you a realistic example, a practical example that what actually happened with missing. Like uh, my marketing strategy did wonders for me because I had a teaser trailer of missing, and Wild Blue Press uh, actually signed a deal with me. They actually signed a three book deal with me. They actually were blown away with the teaser trailer of missing, and they just got they simply loved it, and they just wanted to have their hands on the book, and they wanted to get this book published by Wild Blue Press. Which it so will be. Well, me and me and we. Have to take a one minute break, 60 seconds, to do some marketing ourselves. We'll be right back with me and Mohsen Zia live from Pakistan on True Crime Uncensored on Matt Allen's brilliant OutlawRadioLive.com. Trapped in a dive bar on the politically incorrect side of the tracks. Leaning my rifle, dreaming of you. Radio from the Hollywood fringe. Smoking, drinking, interrupting. Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt Allen. Leaning my rifle and dreaming of you. Scratching your audio itch every Saturday. Charismatic, outrageous, edgy, hilarious. Radio for the mentally challenged. <laughs> Chronic talk from the panic room. Look, up in the sky. Smoking, drinking, interrupting. Magic Mad Allen. This is Outlaw Radio. Now you can take your smoking, drinking, in. Microphone, please. Thank you. I am the legendary Burl Bear, and when I'm not on True Crime Uncensored, I'm wandering around aimlessly wondering what the hell to do with myself. And then someone says, why don't you write a book? And so, I do. My latest masterpiece, and I do have several, is Betrayal in Blue, the true story of Ken Jarrell and Michael Dow, the two most corrupt cops in the NYPD. They were making uh, about 13 grand a year as cops and eight grand a week providing protection for a Dominican drug cartel. Hey, nice work if you can get it. They say crime doesn't pay, but the hours are good. Betrayal in Blue by Burl Bear, Frank Gerardo Jr., and Ken Urell. Yep, the real Ken Urell. Uh, it's available by, well, you can get it as an e-book, or you can get it as a paperback, or you can get it as an audio book. What a deal. You can also pick up A Taste for Murder by Burl Bear and Frank C. Gerardo Jr. That's the one they did the TV special on, Investigation Discovery, and that sure helped those damn book sales, I'll tell you that. I want you to buy all my books, whether you read them or not. Mere possession of the bookends bespeaks volumes of your erudition and good taste. And now, let's get back to True Crime Uncensored. You can take your smoking, drinking, interrupting obsession with you 24 hours a day on any phone or device. And it's all free. Just go to your friendly app store and search for Outlaw Radio. Then look for the red letters on the sign with the bullet holes in it and download it. It's free. Listen free on the road, in your car, at the beach, or in your backyard. It's all free from Outlaw Radio. This is Buddy Twist. Saying goodnight from Hollywood. Back to True Crime Uncensored I've heard of it. with Burl Bear and Howard Lapidus. Me too, yeah. And Mark C. G. Boyer, our fact checker. Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna play that part? Nah, we'll get to it. <laughs> we'll get to, we'll get to it sooner or later. Featuring Mark C. G. Boyer. There you go. Yeah, okay. Uh, me and Mohsen Azia, live from Pakistan on True Crime Uncensored. Uh, he's got women all over the world. What the heck is it books. like? What's it like to live in Pakistan? Seriously. The pretty? Did we lose him? Me and you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, yeah Pakistan time. pretty. Is it nice there? What's it like to live there? Yeah, absolutely. Indeed. Why not? It's one of the best countries in the world. Yeah, I bet. Lovely. I haven't been there myself. 
Well, I, uh, then I invite you through this platform on this show. I invite you to visit Pakistan, Howard, Bull, Mike. I invite you all, and I'm sure that you will love Pakistan. You will love this country. You will love the people over here. The people are very friendly, very loving, and very caring. You will love the hospitality of the country, and you will love it. So, do you, do you have a house there, or a, an apartment, a condo, or no house, 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 house? Oh. So and you got parents? Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yeah. I'll, yeah, Alhamdulillah, I live uh, I live along with my parents, and uh, I have uh, a one elder brother and one sister. So you have space in the basement for me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we have space for you in a hut. Ah, in a hut, in their heart. Oh, and, and oh, space in your heart. Uh, yeah, I don't think he'd fit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's Even second, don't worry about that. Uh, we, 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 we Pakistanis are very loving and very caring. So once you come over here, you will see that how much care and how much love and how, how much affection you will get from us, and you won't lo- you won't you won't uh, you won't feel disappointed. I'm why, sure. why do you think I that, that you. why do you think that people in the United States are afraid of Pakistan? Well, I don't think so that people in the United States are afraid of, of people in Pakistan. Had that been the case, you wouldn't have had me, had me on, your, uh, on your show today. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Now, are, uh, can people in Pakistan buy your books? Yeah, obviously. Why not? Uh, in fact, uh, some of them have uh, purchased my book uh, uh, and ha- and asked me to have my sign, uh, my signature on the book. They wanted my autograph on the book. Well, how about that? I, I I would want one of those. I gave uh, Vic. Remember Vic? Yeah. Yeah. What a jerk! I <laughs> I gave Vic a signed copy of one of my books. He refused to take it. <laughs> well, I've done that too. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, that's the story there. I've got Headshot. What's the name of that book? Again? Yeah, I've got a book called Headshot. Yeah, I've got that. It's in the trunk of my car. That's a good place for it because bodies are often found there. That's correct. <laughs> so that that fits perfectly. Uh, so you've got the book up, which I uh, thought was really ahead of the curve. And as uh, Howard was saying during the break, a lot of people now have caught up to what you were doing uh, seven, eight years ago. You were really ahead of what everyone else is doing in terms of marketing, promotion of books. Have kind of caught up with you. Uh, have you been invited to speak, like, uh, to marketing classes and universities and stuff like that? Hello? Ian, have you been invited yeah, to yeah. speak at marketing classes? Uh, well, actually, I was a guest of honor at one of the leading universities in Pakistan, where I had to lecture the students on marketing and branding. And uh, currently, I'm also in, in 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 discussion with another uh, one of uh, one of the uh, uh, a major university uh, that would like me to uh, th- that would like me to be a guest and uh, give a lecture to the students on marketing and branding as well. Now, this must be kind of strange for some of them because you're not that much older than some of the students. So to have someone... Yeah, indeed. And, and yeah, yeah, let me tell you over here that uh, when I was uh, the, uh, the guest of honor at one of the leading universities in Pakistan where I had to lecture the students on marketing and writing, um, the other senior people, all the others were really very, very surprised to see me that how young I am. I look like a student, in fact. And they asked me precisely that what is the reason, uh, what, what, what is the key to success or what's the secret of my success? So they were really very much surprised about that. So you are absolutely right. I agree with you. And I just felt very humble and I was very thankful to all my Kerala for uh, for blessing me with uh, with such a great honor when I, I was there as a chief guest uh, uh, at, a, uh, at one of the best universities in Pakistan. So the answer is really good skin cream. <laughs> Keep him looking so young. So, he so is young. Yeah. Well, well, the answer is that uh, when you are just... Hello? Do we still, did we lose him? I think we lost him. That's it. Yeah. Are you there? Hello. We might have lost the connection. I think we lost the connection. I think we should, uh, if we hang up, he'll call us back. Yeah, but Matt's not there to hang up. <laughs> Mark, oh, could you go do something about that? We're yeah. sending Mark to, uh, to find Matt, uh, who runs and hides during our show, to prepare for his show, which takes a lot of preparation. Even listeners it have does. to prepare. It, it does. You know, that reminds me... Outlaw when Radio is a highly researched, seriously, yeah, show and highly prepared. Uh huh. Today, uh, the show uh, comes on in mere minutes, uh, about a half hour from now. It's going to be extraordinarily interesting. Um, many, many different um, ideas and people will be uh, coming through that show today for sure. Well, it's uh, always so exciting. That no, so. I mean, I, I, I know a little bit about what's going to happen, and it's going to be quite interesting and quite good. So I'm looking forward to Outlaw Radio. 
uh, finding the a branding guy like uh, me and me and um, it's interesting to see how he does it you know like what, one question I want to ask him if we get him back is it, the book that I always allude to that I'll never write uh, my 89 days my with Paul Abdul. 89 days with Paul Abdul. If he could market that before I write it, yeah, and we sell it first, then I'll have you just write it. Okay. And <laughs> and and then uh, you know I'll say I wrote it, but really. Brutal. Yeah. Well, that's called ghostwriting. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. But I, I I would have to pay you, and I don't intend to. Yeah, I know that. But uh, we'd sell it. I think yeah. we'd sell a lot of books. Oh, of course. Yeah. But that's especially if me and Nelson Zia is doing the marketing on it. <laughs> it would be interesting, uh, you know, because he could put a trailer together in a second. Yeah. Because there's nothing but real good uh, tape on her that is available. Public domain. In and public domain, and we can use it in, in what the heck. She might sue you. Do you think she'd sue you? I would hope she would. <laughs> because I, I could have so much fun with that. She wouldn't because she knows I know too much. And, and, um, and, and uh, what she doesn't know is I, I won't give her up. And I'll never write the book. Yeah, I mean, you know well, that. if if Mia does the marketing and people want to buy it, I still won't write it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it. You can write it and yeah, actually put your name on it. But but it, it's uh, it'd be very difficult for me to uh, to out, so to speak, someone that was a client because I would probably never sign another client again. So. Uh, <laughs> well, you're getting to right, that. Hold on, buddy. Hold on. Hold okay, on. Uh, there we go. We get them back now. Hey, Mia. Is he back? Me in? Yeah, I'm back. Oh, he's uh, back. I think, um, Here, here's the thing, and I know a lot of Pakistanis don't know how to do this, but don't hang up in the middle of the call. <laughs> I think it was an accident. <laughs> well, no, actually, it wasn't something like that. It actually, the call just, like, got disconnected, so it wasn't something that... Uh, uh, you, you didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> Uh, we're Obviously, glad, we're glad you came back. What we were talking about uh, in uh, that moment that we didn't have you is that yeah. the book that I intend, uh, I talk about writing, which I'll never write, is my 89 Days with Paula Abdul. Now we could take that and market the heck out of it, and do a trailer and do the whole nine yards, just everything that you're doing with missing, and then see if people <laughs> really want to buy the book. It would be interesting. Sure, why not? <laughs> okay, we'll do that. And if they do want to buy the book, then I'll have Burl write it and I won't pay him. Um, <laughs> I suspect, uh, Howard, that you'll have more contacts from attorneys than just fans. And as I said, I'm hoping that that be the case. Because that that would, <laughs> if she sued me, it would give us so much publicity, right? Me and we would have a, so much publicity from that lawsuit that we would sell even more books. That's the plan. Hmm. Well, actually, actually, Howard, the thing was that when I started working on Missing, I, I never, uh, uh, was, I, I wasn't thinking about the fact that uh, uh, any publishing house or someone would come up to me or show their interest in the book. I was just doing my work, and that's how things happened. It's, it's simply that I, do, I always have said that when you're destined to achieve some, something, you do achieve it. So it wasn't something that I actually, uh, like had at the back of my mind that okay let's go this way and maybe I should attract a publishing house or something like that I was just doing my work and my work was uh, was, was, was was good enough uh, that it was exceptionally good enough that uh, uh, a US publishing house Wild Blue Press they actually uh, had me on board and uh, signed a deal uh, signed a three book deal with me well that's you know that's exactly what I, I think what happened here I think you could make not only that famous I think what we should do is have you take true crime uncensored make that famous take outlaw radio make that famous and uh, well we're already famous sir howard but you you do what you have to do bud. <laughs> i'm just trying to get more famous if anyone can make you more famous howard it would be me and i want to be number one in pakistan we do have listeners in Pakistan. At the moment, how are you number two? Well, uh, that is a subway token. after this show after this show you will be definitely number one in pakistan <laughs> I agree. Excellent. Yeah, it's about time, because I was tired of Dan Zupanski being number one in Pakistan. <laughs> but are, are you able to take a copy of this show and then remarket it in Pakistan? 
Yes, the thing is that it's not about marketing in Pakistan. Actually, the thing is that think of the moon and you'll fall somewhere in the stars. You you need to you need you need to think uh, to get to the highest level, the max, uh, the highest level. And if you think about just a particular section or a particular cohort, if you want to just impress a particular uh, uh, a, a particular group or a particular segment from the market, that won't help the help the cause. You just need to th- uh, think that you need to attract, you need to grab uh, the, uh, the, the the largest uh, the largest um, um, uh, uh, section or the biggest segment of the market, and and if, uh, and you will definitely be able to do it. If you just think about uh, targeting just a particular section, particular country, particular cohort, particular group, that won't help the cause. So if you have a book, definitely uh, I'm sure that uh, you have written. Uh, you, you're a great. Uh, uh, you have great achievements under your belt. Uh, Burl is a legendary author. Who doesn't know Burl? He, uh, he he has written such great books, and uh, I have always said uh, to Burl, and I will always shared my thought uh, my thoughts about Burl's books, uh, about his marketing. I have even uh, uh, you you are a famous uh, Hollywood producer yourself, Howard. So I I, I would say that uh, if you have written a book, then definitely uh, uh, you um, you must uh, you must uh, uh, follow your heart, and you must definitely uh, promote it. And I'm sure that it will be good. It will be good. Well, I think that uh, the, the fact that I produced Freddy Got Fingered uh, catapulted me. Oh, I got to tell you, Howard, when I was uh, in Florida and I had dinner with uh, these two great Ukrainian guys, uh, I guess Americans would say they were in the, the Russian mafia at one time, uh, I mentioned Freddy Got Fingered and they went nuts. Is that right? Oh, they said, that's a classic. That's a classic. Howard did that. Well, he's a genius. That's a classic film. That's brilliant. <laughs> well, I, 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 I do have my friends in the Russian mob. And um, <laughs> and they agree. <laughs> they agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's very nice to hear. Oh, they, yeah, well, they were dumbfounded. They were just ecstatic. Well, we were they made, thunderstruck? Yeah, we, they were thunderstruck, we too. made, and, and me and us, we made a, a, a cult movie. You know, that was not very popular when it first came out, but over the last 15 years, it has become a classic. Um, and, <laughs> and, and it, quite frankly, I've embarrassed my children. <laughs> Even, I started to watch it once, and oh boy, uh, I can see why it's become a classic. <laughs> well, they're old, my kids are old enough now to go, hey, Dad, really? You did that? I mean, <laughs> you know, my friends watch that, we make fun of it all the time. That's good. You're Do you watching. still get checks in the mail on that one? No. 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 Not even on DVD sales? Not, or not, not uh, the thing made more money a- after the fact, but we were paid in advance for that to happen. Ah. So, so we did we did very well on that movie off the top. So, and uh, you know, I've spent the money. So, what do I care? That's right. I always say that's my motto: spend the money. Well, no, it, it, it was a long time ago, and I spent the money. I put uh, those kids that make fun of me. My kids that make fun of me for making that movie are in uh, one has graduated college on the money that was made from that movie. Right, you and Bobcat Goldwait. Yeah, and, and one is about to go to college on the money that we made from that movie. So uh, they can make fun of me all they want. <laughs> that's right. Is, I don't care. That's uh, what that's what Bobcat Goldwaite said about that uh, whatever film he did that got such bad. Uh, oh, he did that. Um, he did that thing with Sandler actually. Um, and he said uh, that that film paid for this house. That was <laughs> it did, and it did. And and he'll tell you. And Bob Bob's a friend. He'll he'll tell you that uh, you know he knows what we did with Freddie. You know it was kind of the same thing. So um, thank you for saying I'm a. a, a so what what you, what'd you say about me being? He a said fam- you're a famous a famous, famous uh, Hollywood producer. Yeah. Um, I don't think of myself as that, but damn well you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you are absolutely right, man. He is a famous Hollywood producer. Yeah, in my in my head. Uh, man, and, I'm I'm running out of uh, oxygen in the room as the head starts to swell here. <laughs> my head is swelling. <laughs> me and nose. He's researched me. I see. You have, correct? I've, I've researched you also. You uh, and uh, I'm quite uh, I'm quite impressed. Oh, there's some good stuff on on me out there, and I and I. Uh, yeah, my head is swelling right now. Mian well, manages to get all these various people to endorse his books and cold his coffee cups. Uh, which which is hysterical, by the way, Mian. That is funny. I, I, want, to, I want to endorse a coffee cup uh, for, <laughs> for you. I really do. I, I would love to have my name and my picture on a coffee cup with yours. Okay, do you have, a, do you have the phrase that goes on the coffee cup? Damn good book. 
<laughs> says Howard Lapidus. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Yeah. Nothing. Damn good book. That says it all. And it's a love story, no less. <laughs> <laughs> well, Indeed, the book is the, the book itself. The book itself is great enough uh, that actually excites people to have its merchandise with their brand, with their personalized name printed on it. So I think that's what makes people excited to have their personalized branded drinkers mug, and that's what happened with uh, with, with with Hollywood actors, with actors from British film industry, uh, all the American actors. I'm really thankful to all of them uh, for showing such great response, for showing such great support, and for acknowledging praise endorsing me uh, and and it's, it's 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 a huge honor for me it it, it really uh, it really adds uh, adds to my list of achievements and makes me stand out in the crowd and makes me the only pakistani author and marketing specialist who has been endorsed by hollywood actors who has been endorsed by uh, actors from british film industry um, even even my merchandise my merchandise has been well received by american superstar as big as Ford really uh, so so there are there are several things that actually adds to my credibility so i'm really thankful and because the product itself is good enough. I always believe that if a product is not good enough, even 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 best of the marketers won't help uh, to get the product shelf. So it's the product at the end of the day that needs to be good enough, and that's what I actually work on. Because uh, because if my product, if my book is not good enough, uh, all these marketing strategies, all these marketing tools, all these marketing techniques won't help the cause. So no. I need to first work on the marketing, and that helps me because I think like an author, and then I think like a marketing specialist. So. Uh, it's all down to it's all down it's a package uh, that is actually created at the end of the day for for the end user for the buyer i want my readers to get something out of it if if someone is buying my book uh, spending some x amount of dollars i want them to get something out of it i don't want them to put the book aside i want the book to be in their hands and they should think about it once they're even done reading so the book stays with them long after they are not they are done reading and that's what has happened with my book once that has uh, has happened with my other books as well and even with wrinkles as well. You just go to Amazon. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, when you read the reviews of Wrinkles, which is an unusual yeah. love story, he's got his fam well, me and his famous for twist, uh, so I say throwing well, I a... I want him to... Uh, tell us about Wrinkles. Seriously, tell us about that but, book. Yeah. Sure. Well, uh, uh, Howard, actually, uh, Wrinkles is a slice of life, uh, is a slice of life true love story, a feel-good book featuring five custom poems that are reflective of the character's feelings. It's a very powerful book, and when I started writing The Wrinkles, I actually wanted to write a feel-good book. That was the main objective. I wanted to write a feel-good book, a slice of life true love story, but, but once I went on, uh, it became so good, so good, so good that it became uh, even the most powerful story of the year. And uh, it has everything. Uh, Wrinkles has a heartfelt mother-son relationship, a one-of-a-kind friendship, and a tried-and-true love, which will make you believe that a true love story never ends. It makes for a brilliant tapestry of human interaction. It is a must read for those who believe in true love and true friendship. It uh, also highlights the role of a mother and the significance of her role within the family. Anyone who has ever fallen in true love, experienced true friendship, and shared a great bond with his or her mother would definitely love wrinkles. And let me tell you over here that... Um, an American author, um, she actually bought two copies of Wrinkles on the Mother's Day, uh, one for herself and one to present to her mother. And um, and she, she 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 loved the book uh, very much. That she even presented a copy of the book to her mother. So so it is actually that that any person who will read Wrinkles will somehow relate himself or herself to the characters of the book. And that's what I, I just mentioned, that it makes a brilliant tapestry of human interaction, that everyone loves his or her mother, everyone shares a great bond with his or her family, everyone has uh, has somehow, somewhere fallen in true love or experienced true friendship. So, so everyone has something in the book with which they can relate themselves and, and they can cherish their life experiences, and that's what makes, a, makes Wrinkles a really great book, a very solid book and a very powerful book. So and the thing is, is that... People, uh, when I read the reviews, they all pretty much say the same thing. That is, it's one of those books that you don't just read it and put it down. That months later, you're still thinking about it, still relating to it. And I think that's, that's quite an achievement for any author. 
Indeed, indeed. Alhamdulillah, that is a huge achievement, and that's what I actually intend to write, and that's what I'm trying to do with. I've done with all my books, and I'm very. Uh, I feel really, very humble to see the great response from people around the world, uh, especially from United States of America and other parts of the world. Uh, what, what else I can say? Even Hollywood actors, even American actors, even actors from British film industry have given their uh, have given five star reviews to the book. So, so they, it, it leaves nothing more to say. Even, even, even. Even the merchandise of the book has been well received by American superstar as big as Forbes, really, and and many other Hollywood actors, American actors, and actors from British film industry. So it means nothing more to say that uh, how good the book itself, how good the marketing the, of the book has been. So 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 I would just only say that the reviews that the book has received, and even the book went on to win readers' favorite international book award. Like uh, this is the same award that Hollywood superstar Jim Carrey won in 2014. So to to stand in that league of uh, uh, great men and uh, winning that award uh, for a book, uh, it, it is a huge, huge, huge achievement, and it it it, it also adds uh, lots of more responsibility on my shoulders to uh, to deliver uh, the same quality again, and that's what I have done with once, uh, and then I went on to write another book, and then uh, wrinkles, and now I'm working on missing. So, so this is what a brand is all about. A brand is something that you constantly deliver same quality time and time again. That's that that, that makes you a brand, and that's what I focus on, and that's what the brand of books I have uh, I write uh, helps me to establish myself uh, and to stamp my authority and get better and better day by day and get more and more readers. And my readers actually uh, uh, are my strength. My readers are my strength, and I write for my readers. I, I write for them, and, and their reviews actually helps me a lot. Because that actually motivates me, and any author, even Howard, you are a producer, you are a great producer. Burns himself is a legendary author. You know that uh, uh, artists always. I uh, always get motivated uh, when they get a good response or when they get a positive feedback uh, from uh, fr- from their from their. Uh, no, you hit on something very important, me, and I remember uh, yeah. uh, 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 Michaela ha- Hamilton from uh, Kensington Publishing said, "Don't read your reviews on Amazon." And I said, "Why is that?" <laughs> she, she said, "Because you'll read a bad review." Uh, or someone will say something negative. Some of it is just a troll. Someone who's even never even read the book, but they like to delight in lowering your scores, and that one will haunt you. All the positive ones you'll forget about. No, I, I never have any clients. Uh, my recommendation is never read reviews, because as as many good ones you have, you get bad ones, and and the bad ones, by the way, are the ones that stick. The good ones get thrown out the window. It's a fascinating process. Yeah. So she said the only review that counts is the one from your editor at the publishing company saying we want to sign you to write more books. That's the. That, <laughs> well, he knows that. Agree. <laughs> agree. <laughs> Burl, you are Burl, Burl and Howard. Uh, you are both hundred percent correct over here. But I would like to just mention over here that yes, uh, you are absolutely correct. That some people actually try to uh, uh, try to hurt or dent your star rating on Amazon with their fake reviews and and blah blah blah. but the point over here is that uh, one should be never bitter towards uh, bitter experience of of life uh, even if you get a negative review you shouldn't you shouldn't get uh, you shouldn't be bothered about it i think fact, uh, i i think i th- i'm going to ask in a positive spirit i'm going to ask you a question which I, i i i shouldn't ask because i do know the answer but do you write in pack in in pakistani first and then have it translated to english No, 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 no. I write in English. I write in English. Um, uh, in Pakistan, the native language is Urdu language, uh, but I write in English. I, I, I write the book in English. I never write in 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 in, in some other language and then get get it translated. I write in English. I did not know that. See, I I had figured it the other way around, and I, my question then would be, and it still is. So you write in English when it does get it does get translated. Does it get lost in the translation? Well, like you had your book translated into Russian. I don't know if you read Russian or not. Uh, I've had my books translated into seven languages, uh, one of which I'm semi-fluent in, which is English. But um, even Hebrew. The only thing I recognized on the Hebrew edition of my book was my name, because I remember that from my bar mitzvah. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that was about it. I couldn't read the rest did, of the book. Did, did they use your Hebrew name? <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah. I think I'm going to use my Hebrew name for the rest of today's show. <laughs> And what would that be, Ben Bot? Uh, Chaim Ben Zvi. Chaim Ben Zvi. Yeah. Ben Zvi. My father was Zvi. 
So it's Ben Svi. And mm -hmm. so it's Chaim, son of Svi. Yep. I have a son of, son of Herzl. Yeah, we've had yeah. son of Sam on here, too. <laughs> oh, quiet. <laughs> That's actually where that came from, but people don't really know or understand that, that the son of Sam. Yeah. But um, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about uh, Mayan and, and his marketing strategy and his, and his books. I have, and, a, I have a question for our yes, guest. Yes, sir. Uh, this is your fifth book, Missing? Yeah, I'm missing, missing so, is going to be my fifth book, inshallah. So what, um, what have you learned from the other four books and the writing process that you're bringing to this book? Well, the thing is that uh, it's, not about, it's not about that you actually try to uh, calculate. It's about your passion. Writing is my passion. Right? I, I've always said that uh, I'm an author by choice, not by profession. Okay. So writing is something that is a, that is a platform or a medium for me uh, to reach out, uh, to express my emotions, and to and to write something that not only entertains but also enlightens. I always intend to write a meaningful fiction. So, so, so my objective at the end of the day, when I start a project, is not about thinking that. Uh, uh, what I would like to get out of it. My objective is that what I can give to well, readers. What let I me, think, what let I me, think, I, let I think me you misunderstood. I think you misunderstood my question. Uh, I'm a writer also. It just happens to be computer programs. Every time you okay. write something, you learn. You learn something mm -hmm. uh, in the process, and then you take okay, what okay, you've I learned and I you bring it. that to the next project. So what yeah, I'm asking okay, is okay, that you've written four books, and mm -hmm. you must have learned something from that experience of yeah. those four books. Yeah, but actually the thing is that what I learned uh, uh, from uh, my experience uh, is, uh, is that uh, uh, you need, uh, I always believe that no matter whatever level you reach in life, getting better never stops. So this is the first thing that I've learned, uh, even though I have written uh, four books so far, Alhamdulillah, so I've learned the, the, the best thing or the one thing that I have learned uh, uh, from this process is that no matter whatever level you reach in life, getting better never stops. So, 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 so learning is a never-ending loop, so you cannot uh, say that I have learned this much or I have learned that much. The point is that learning uh, le uh, learning is a never-ending loop. You constantly keep on learning. And uh, what I have learned is that uh, how you can write better and, and how you can like attract people towards your writing. What, what people want to read, what you need to write, and how you can get better and better with each book. But my procedure, my process has been the same. My process has been the same and, 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 I, and I have always focused on the process. If the process is right, results will come automatically. So I have always learned that I should focus on the process, not about the results. If the process is right, results will come automatically. So this is, these are the things that I have learned uh, that uh, uh, how I need to get a better product and make a better product, a more refined product. product. And uh, I, I just uh, applied a different kind of a, a strategy based upon my learning, uh, based upon what I learned from the previous three books of mine when what I was working on Lincoln. What, what, what? My objective was to, to really focus, to really, really, really focus on the editing phase. Of the, of the book. What you, the book but what you haven't said, but I think is the big answer, because you've said it and alluded to it in this interview, is that you have learned to listen to your audience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've learned to listen to my I, I've learned to listen to my audience, but it doesn't mean that uh, uh, if I have learned to listen to my audience, I would change my product or I would uh, refine or reshape my product. It's not the, that. What I have learned to listen to my audience is that I, I, I is something that my audience needs a more refined product. So that's what I focused when I was working on Wrinkles. In Wrinkles, what I did is that I really focused on the editing phase, on the proofreading phase of the book. So so that was that was a really uh, a, 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 a real big challenge for me because it had it, it, it had it demanded me to put in lots of extra effort and lots of hard work. So 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 the editing phase is something that even through this show I would like to say to other authors that. Uh, who actually want to write a book or who are writing a book or who want to self-publish or whatever, I would just like to tell them that writing a book is something else. That, but 
editing phase, the phase where you edit your book to prove you read your book, is 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 also as important as uh, you write a book. So most of the times, what mistake people do is they they think that if they have written a book, uh, they have won the battle, they have done the job. No, half the job is done. The rest of the half is all about the proofreading and editing phase, where you can really define and polish your product, and you have to work. Very diligently, very closely with your proofreader and editor, but this is what authors at times lack. Or, that's or, or that's very, very true. <laughs> also, the fact is that and you're writing for people who like your books. You're not writing for people who don't like them, and that's an important thing to keep in mind. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, and 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 the point is that if you are sincere, uh, you will definitely uh, uh, put in lots of effort uh, when you get into the proofreading and editing phase because this is something that I really learned uh, from my experience. Mark, I would really like to put up over here that this is something that I really learned from my previous three books that proofreading and editing is a very, very, very important phase. So, and, so and, you uh, don't uh, have uh, problems uh, when an editor reads your book and gives notes. You don't have problems. With Oh, Obviously, okay. why would I have problem? The point is that I don't want the story to be changed. If if if, if my editor uh, points out something, or if my editor asks me about something, or if my editor actually suggests me something, uh, I am there to listen to to the editor, to the proofreader. But it doesn't mean that I would just uh, not use my mind and I would just uh, instantaneously change the product or make some changes. No, I won't do that. I won't do. I won't change the plot of the story. I won't make those major changes. But I would listen to the editor as long as it makes logical sense if it makes logical sense i will follow the editor i will accept it but if not then we will have a discussion and discussions are always very healthy uh, 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 brainstorming sessions are very productive so i'll tell you about me and I'll, I'll give you a, a perfect illustration of this uh, there is a book called gone but not forgotten it was a huge hit uh, internationally best selling book and they made a tv movie out of it starring a um, um, uh, Matthew, uh, Matt Allen's uh, old poker playing partner, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips. And when uh, the book was so good that he received a $3 million advance for this book. Oh. And then his editor called up and said, you ready to get to work? He says, what do you mean? He says, we just paid you $3 million. We see a diamond here, but it's still a lump of coal. We got about another year's worth of work to do on it. <laughs> uh, me and do you get to the United States ever? We gotta bring you here, Mian. We gotta no, bring you over here. No, we're done. We're done. Show's all over. MianMosinZia.com. Go visit there, buy all of his books, enjoy all of his books. Thank you so much for being on the show. Magic Bad Allen. So I, would just, I would just like to wrap up the show by saying a uh, huge thank you to uh, Bullbatter, uh, the legendary Bullbatter, a uh, brilliant Hollywood producer, uh, uh, Howard Lapid, as well as Mark. I uh, thank you all for uh, having me on the show, and I would just like to tell uh, all the all your listeners that go to buy Amazon and buy Wrinkles, read it. You will love it. Just share your reviews with me. Your reviews are very important for me. Th thanks so much. So, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I look forward to speaking to you again. This was fun. Uh, hey, Burl, what's next? What's next? <laughs> <laughs> Magic Man L and the Demons of Decadence live in the Lineup Lounge and Alaradio Live. dot com. <laughs>